Begin by using the new design from file and select the Dust Shroud Fusion Archive file. Once it's open, make sure to save it to your project. This model was not created natively in Fusion 360, so by default, it was loaded in the Sculpt workspace. As long as this is a solid model, it won't affect your ability to run simulation on it. Now switch to the Simulation workspace and select the Modal Frequency Study Type. Then select Create Study. Once the study is created, you'll want to review the materials. For this study, go ahead and leave the materials as they were in the design. Under Constraints, we'll use a structural constraint. We'll use a fixed type and select the two bolt holes. These bolt holes are used to mount the dust shroud to a fixture that also holds the motor. Make sure that all of the degrees of freedom are removed. Once those constraints are placed, Restart the Structural Constraints tool, keep it the fixed type, and then select the four surfaces on the top inside round surface. This is the surface that surrounds the motor. These surfaces will be able to bump up against the motor, but they will not be supporting the motor in the Z direction. So we'll want to free the UZ axis by deselecting it. Once this is done, click OK, and the shroud is constrained. Modal frequency is a solution type that can be done on the cloud or locally. To save cloud credits, select a local solution and start the solve. After a few moments, the results will appear, and we'll see that the primary mode is 382.5 Hz. The specified motor runs between 18,000 and 24,000 RPM. As a result, based on a 60 Hz motor, it gives us a primary resonant frequency for the motor between 300 and 400 Hz. This current model falls within that range, so it looks like we might need to make some changes to the design. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other modes and you'll see how each mode seems to affect a different portion of the design. For another way to see the effects, open the mass participation factors from the results panel. This will display the amount of mass in the X, Y, and Z of the model that are affected by this mode. Clicking the table in the upper left will show each of the modes, the frequency, the participation in X, Y, and Z, and then the sum. Discovering a problem like this one in the design is a great example why including simulation early in the process is very important. Now let's make a change to the design by switching back to the model workspace. Then, in order to record the changes, since this design wasn't originally created in Fusion, we'll turn on Design History. Under the Inspect pull-down, select the Measure tool, and we'll take a look at how thick the material is right now. Then we can start the Press Pull tool, select one of the faces, and offset the thickness of the model, minus 1.788, to bring it down to the thickness of 20 gauge aluminum. You'll see because all of the faces are tangent, the entire model changes. With the new thinner model completed, we'll go back to Simulation, and we'll be warned that the current model is now out of date with the Simulation model. We can switch to the model view to make sure that the model is updated properly, and now run Solve to find out our new results. After a few moments, the new results will appear, and we see that now the primary mode is 253 Hz. This is below the frequency range that we were most concerned with. Taking a look at some of the other modes, we see that none of the eight listed modes fall within that frequency range. And once again, you can turn on model mass participation to see what the effect of the design change is.